Hey there, so this is going to be a quick impromptu video. I had not intended to make a video on this subject. Uh, someone asked me if it were possible to calculate the implied volatility given the delta of an option. Uh, if you don't know the, the, uh, the stock price or the strike price, uh, the simple answer to that is no. You need to know the, both the, uh, the stock and strike or at least the ratio of the stock price to the strike price. Uh, to do so, but other than that, it's fairly straightforward, although there are some nuance to it. Uh, that's why I wanted to make the video. So rather than doing kind of a whole in-depth uh, video on the topic, because we've covered all this stuff before, I'm just going to reference those workbooks that we've already uh, created and those videos and just kind of go through this quickly, and hopefully the whole thing should take on the order of five minutes. So let's get into it. So as in those previous videos we've done on the topic, this is a root finding problem. We have a model equation for delta here for the call. I'll just focus here on calls. So delta is equal to D1 um, evaluated through the cumulative normal distribution function, and D1 here is given by this. So if we know uh, S, K, R, and T, the stock price, the strike price, the risk-free rate, time to expiration, sigma is the only unknown in that equation here. And we can just figure it out by solving this equation here. So our model price uh, for delta uh, subtracted from our known va value of delta is equal to zero. And we just um, figure out which sigma makes that equation true. Now, for Newton's method, we need the derivative of this equation with respect to, um, with respect to volatility. Um, so that just turns out to be the Greek called vanna, um, the derivative of delta with respect to volatility here, and that's equal to this expression down here. So let's go over to our tab here where we talked about uh, Newton's method. This uh, technique basically works by you take a test point, a guess point of your initial um, initial guess for the uh, the root. Um, that's why you need the derivative here. This is the derivative of the slope of the tangent line, and you get a successively better approximation for the root. So you figure out where this tangent line goes through zero. So in this case, it'd be about roughly speaking about about here. This is our new guess for the root. Uh, so we'd evaluate um, the derivative here at this point. We get another tangent line, and you see we get a result that would be roughly here. And then we do that, and we get closer and closer to this point, point down here. So let's go back to our notebook for this. <clears throat> so I've already done the import. Let me just do it again just to make sure. And I have... Um, brought in our function to do that Newton's method approximation. I've also uh, written the function to calculate the call uh, call delta uh, vanna and our uh, objective function which is just delta minus our known um, our model delta minus our known delta. So let's run that. And I used um, what's wrong here? Something looks funky. Why are the HTML tags? Oh, I didn't run that cell. There we go. That looks better. So a couple of days ago, I pulled um, information on SPX options, looking at the strike price, uh, 44.90. At the time, the index price was 42.71.78, with 27 days left to expiration. The risk-free rate, I'm just using the three-month uh, T-bill rate, which is 0.82%. And the delta of that option was um, 0.15. So can we calculate the implied volatility, which our, my trading platform told me was 17.79. Uh, 17 so let's just run our Newton's method code and see what we get. Well, that's not right. We get a negative implied volatility. And the reason that that's happening is if we plot out what this function we're trying to figure out is, this is um, our y-axis is our model delta minus uh, known delta as a function of volatility here. Um, whatever tangent, most tangent lines that we draw here is gonna give an intercept in the negative territory. So that does not make sense for a long call. Um, there's always positive, uh, positive numbers, or zero or a positive number. So that's causing an issue here. Let me actually extend this down to something that kind of doesn't make sense. So minus one to one. And we see there's a lot of issues here with this function if you kind of go to the negative values. You have this discontinuity at sigma equals zero. So that's what's causing that issue. Um, 
you can get this to work if you're a little more careful with your value that you choose for your initial guess. I was choosing 0.3, 30% implied volatility. 0.1, I believe, will work. Yeah, we're bound, we get an a uh, answer of 17.08%, which is basically the same same number that I get here. I don't know ex exactly what model they're using here, or what time, um, you know, when the last time they updated the volatility is. So I'm going to consider that to be an exact answer. Um, let me rerun that cell just so we don't have that ugly looking plot. Another way to do that is via the bisection method. So if you know that your root is between two points, so looking at this graph here, we know it's between zero, it's roughly here, right, around 17%. It's between zero and one. Um, the bisection method, which I covered in another video, and that notebook is, is it here? Um, <coughs> that's, uh, root, that's Newton bisection. So basically, this method just kind of iterates back and forth. In fact, let me ignore this notebook and just do it here. Um, so we would choose it between two bounds, say 0 and 1, um, and go to the midpoint between 0 and 1. So we know it's negative at 0. We know it's positive here. So if it's still positive at the midpoint, we cut that distance in half. So this is our new upper bound. So here... Uh, this is our new kind of evaluation range here. It's still positive. We keep cutting it down until we get to within some sort of tolerance. And if we run that bisection method, we get the same answer as with Newton, but um, we don't have to worry about the uh, issues with negative numbers because we can choose our bounds here. So I chose it between 1%, um, not 1%, yeah, 1% volatility and 100%. So you have to kind of know a range, but other than that, this method uh, works works a little bit better. So yeah, just a quick video on this. Uh, I'll put links to the relevant videos and relevant notebooks in the video descriptions um, below. And until till next time, see you later.